Hello everyone. I hope you guys are doing amazingly well today and I welcome you back to the Velvet Lounge Life and I would like to really thank all of our brand new subscribers. I'm so happy to have you here and of course I adore my existing subscribers as well. If you're not a subscriber yet, all you have to do is press the subscribe button that you see on your screen and that is it. There's nothing else to do. So thank you guys for joining. And today what I'm going to discuss is the history of one of my favorite types of buttons. I know I have so many favorite types, but this is, um, I'm going to call them shell buttons, mollusk buttons, because those are truly the proper phrases for buttons made out of any type of shell. Many times people will call them mop, which means mother of pearl, and that is not necessarily true. All buttons are not made for mother of pearl. Some will, you know, call them abalone shell buttons. Not all buttons are made from abalone. So we're going to learn about, you know, how these buttons are made, what they're made from. Of course, you know me, I'm going to show you some from my own collection and as far as pearl buttons go, I could definitely probably calm down a little bit on my collecting of them, but I do like them a lot and I don't really see any stopping yet. So the button that you see on your screen right now is a button that is one that I really, really like a lot. And the reason that I like it, just like almost any other button that you've heard me talk about that I like, I usually like buttons that have extra detail so they're a little bit extra and in this case you could see all of this divoting where this was all carved out most likely by hand and all of this beautiful like leaf and vine decoration is all hand carved four hole button of course and also this button is really large like it is if you know what a walking liberty American dollar looks like, it's an old coin that is very large. And you know what I have to do in the future? I have to like have some of those coins here for you guys to look at so you can get an idea of scale because I always talk about the different sizes of coins when I'm comparing sizes for you. And if you're not here in America, because we seem to have a really good German following, Hello everyone in Germany, as well as around the rest of the world. Um, you know, you'll actually be able to visualize it better than me telling you like it's this size or that size. So that's something I'm going to do going forward. But anyway, um, this is just a beautiful button and I thought it was a great way to open up this particular video. And in this video, some of the things you'll also learn, of course, you know, is how to identify you know, a little bit of what you have or just descriptors you can use um, when you're describing your collection, whether it be for resale or simply, you know, something that maybe you're labeling. So here are some of the buttons that we're going to discuss today. And I can't get all of them in the picture, of course, because hello, there's a lot. And this is a large tray. And yes, you will recognize a Ferrero Rocher candy tray again, which I told you is what I use to store my buttons in. I think that one of the things that I will do, someone asked me about this a long, long, I'm going to say well over a year and a half probably ago, is a tour of my studio that I have that I do my eBaying out of, as well as crafting and other business ventures that I have that um, are going on at any given time. And I think in the future sometime I will give you guys a tour as well as this way you'll see where I store my buttons. Um, nowhere special, but I know there are people interested in the costume jewelry as well. So I don't have all the costume jewelry um, stored in here, but you will see where I have some of it stored so that you can get the full idea of how my buttons are stored, not only in like containers like this, but where I put them. 
So anyway, back to why you're really here. So there's a variety of designs. Like there's almost no limit, especially nowadays, as to what one could do if you were a designer of shell or mollusk buttons. Why? Because the machinery has gone like full frontal digital back door, whatever you want to call it. It's just in, it's out, and by the time it's out of production, it is, you know, a work of art that's just ready to be finished, maybe even by an artisan. Some, sometimes it comes off the production line, and then it still goes through a few more steps of color colorization or even something else that they're doing with the design. And so in my collection, I have a wide ar array of from super plain things which I'm not showing you guys. I have so, so many. I'm telling you guys, like, I have tens of them. And I am going to be going through my collection after I finish other projects I've been working on. And I am going to be basically sort of whittling down my collection. I, I hope by 50%. My husband was giggling when I said that like a few weeks ago, but I am truly hoping to get it down by about 50%. I already have sequestered buttons that I am willing to let go of with no issues, worries whatsoever. And one of the things that I do want to do is I want to give them away to people that appreciate them, um, not just, you know, sell them in bulk on line somewhere. Um, truly what I would like to do is give back to those that actually support the channel, but I can't do that until we have a certain number of subscribers and also participation. So if you simply could go down below in the comments and say hello and click the thumbs up symbol that's under the title or near the title of this video, that would be great. And as I said before, if you are not a subscriber to the channel, all you have to do is press the subscribe button because obviously those are the people that will end up owning some of these buttons in the future. So let's get down to business. So a button that I'm just going to, you know, talk about a couple of these large and in charge, um, sometimes large, super large buttons buttons are called big beauties. So here is a big beauty, for example, and I will show you, what can I compare this to? How about a business card? That's the easiest thing to compare. So this is about half the size of a business card. So that's, you know, here is my um, finger that went through our lawn machine, our hedge clipper. Um, so you could see like this is a really gigantic button. It's really large. So this one is actually carved out of abalone shell. And you can usually tell because abalone has a lot of color to it. You look at the back of it as I sort of flash the back of that one. And you can see that it has this coloration and it could be a variety of different colors, depends on what ocean, what country, etc. that these things came out of, meaning the sea creatures. And these are actually large as well. This is about the size of a Kennedy American half dollar. It's probably, I'm going to say maybe a little bigger. It might be even bigger than that. And then something else that I want to show you guys. These are called um, clam broth buttons. And the reason why is there's a striation of circles on the back. You can see there, and you can see it better on this nipple clam broth button. That That is super clear. And here, that's why it's called a nipple, for obvious reasons. I put these in with my shell buttons because, um, just because of the name, that, you know, they're called clam broth. Those are actually made out of glass. So just something not to confuse when you are collecting shell buttons. Um, another thing to know is that shells 
they come in a variety of shades. Most of the shades are going to be ivory to white. So whatever is in between that as well. And they could be a little darker. They could be, you know, super bright. Like these are so bright, they're almost like glowing. But then you have, as you can see here, these are in a rainbow. This is like a variety of blues. And here there's just a variety of colors, just, you know, several different colors. And that the reason for those is because certain shell can be dyed. So they will use a commercial grade dye to really get it to sink in to the, because shells are made from living creatures. You know, shells are a thing of nature, not a thing made by man. So it means that if you looked at it under a microscope, you will see like the little flakes that make up a shell. So that means that dye can penetrate the shell, creating a rainbow of colors when it comes to shells. The longer you keep it in the dye, the deeper and darker and more permanent the color will be. And of course, when creating a button, that's something that you want because people are going to hopefully wash their clothes. And in doing so, you don't want the color to be lost or if it is, if there is any color loss, obviously it would be very, very, very little. Here, there's a variety of shades of color as far as shell, the, I'm sorry, yeah, as far as buttons go because the shells are different. So different shells also take on different colors. Here is, I want to pick up this one. Look at how gorgeous that is. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know why I keep picking up cards that have like tape residue on them because what I do is I tape a card to the cover of the, wait a minute, the boxes that I use to store the buttons in and I'm kind of tired of that. I should have a button that has no tape, I'm sorry, a card that has no tape residue on it. Okay, that's better. Oh, I've shown you guys this button before, but hello, it's worth showing you a hundred times. So super unique, incredibly unique button. Um, it might be a one of a kind button, but you could see that words are carved into it. And it's like a short poem about unity. So you and I T Y people. And this is what the back of the button looks like. Let's put it on a white card so you can see it better. Can you see that's what the back looks like? And here is the front. So just imagine, and at first I thought those letters were painted on, but I actually looked under my loop and I found that they were actually carved in. Also, when I figured out that they were carved in just to make sure, I used like the back of my fingernail just to, to make sure it wasn't painted on. And no, that's carved in, so it's really cool. This one has something that looks like musical notes on it. Um, reminds me of a record or an album. Okay, youngsters out there, you may not know what those are, but they're a thing. And this is made out of abalone. Gorgeous, love it, love it, love it. Favorite, favorite, favorites. And then button, of course, these buttons, just like any other button, you know, other elements can be introduced, such as this one that has the brass um, frame around it. And then, of course, they cut the circle out of the shell, placed it in here. It's actually glued in somehow, and this has survived, I mean, a really long time, like since the 1960s maybe even the 1950s. Actually, this one is from around the 1950s. I know that for a particular reason, grandmother. And 
it also has the brass. So actually, is this one copper? I have to look at it closer. Yep, this one is copper. So this one has a copper frame around it. So very cool. And what else can I show you? Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, look at this one. This is an incredible hulk of a button. It's <laughs> look at it. It's so heavy. I can barely hold it with the tweezers. Um, it's just gigantic. <laughs> look out. Look at it in comparison to this business card. It's like I'm going to say sixty percent of the size of this business card. And look at that, it has a shank. But not only a shank, it has a cross shank or a T shank on it. Just because it's so large, it needed, you know, it needs extra support so that when you sew this on your clothing, it doesn't fall off or flop over. Of course, you want it to lie flat. So that's really cool. that one back in there and then of course you know, oh look at this one it's oval and hello my favorite color and my grandmother's favorite color purple it's like a lilac it's a really light purple so that shows you like you could get this deep dark color uh, with the dyeing of these buttons super deep dark or you can have something that's a little more subtle, like this is, you know, more of a pastel, maybe a little bit darker than a pastel. And you can also have other shapes besides circles. And yes, you know me, I dropped it on the floor, but I just picked it up. I'm gonna put it in there. Let's see, what else can I show you guys that you might find? Incre oh, these you will be able to find usually out in the world. I think right now on eBay, there's like one or two of these for sale. But these are absolutely stunning, very Asian in design, because I do believe these were made in Asia. Um, sort of like the water lily or lotus flower. And you can see the back. And actually, let's compare the two. These two, and I got these at different times. But you could see the two backs. And I would like to thank um, Jill for sending me one of these. Because she's awesome like that. And here they are as twins. And if you look closely, you can see like slight variations like... Here, this is more carved. Here, this is more squared off. You know, so that just, you know, tells you in the finishing process, in, especially if they're finished by hand, that, you know, there will definitely be some small differences. Oh, something we definitely have to talk about is the button maker Shawanda. And I should have looked up Shawanda to see if I could find any history on the company but um, it's a company that made a lot of buttons out of shell. And these are some um, back in the day. I don't know how old these are. You might be able to tell by looking at this. And it says Ocean Pearl by Shawanda. These were 69 cents. And there were six buttons on here. Now there's only four because I used two of them for a project. But... I believe these are maybe from the 1960s, maybe 1970s. But if you, you know, are looking for a particular brand or if you're simply looking for shell buttons, look up Shawanda and you might actually find something that you are looking for, whether it's for actual sewing or collecting or whatever this button there's no way in the world we are not going to look at this button again um, this one is from a good um, friend pen pal of mine Susie and as I've said before one of my favorite buttons 
it has all of this beautiful brass work that was applied to it. So here, 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 and here, that's all applied brass. And if you flip it over, you can see how the pins go through and are bent to keep the brass in place. And there you can see the shank. Wait a minute, if I turn it there, can you see it better? I should let the camera catch up, shouldn't I? There you go. So you can see the shank applied in the middle and the carving of the shell itself. The design, like the leaf design that's at the top of it, as well as here at the bottom. And then, of course, is almost diamond shape in the middle. Absolutely gorgeous. Just love, I mean, just imagine the amount of work that went into that button. Obviously, they're not going to make those anytime soon unless they're on commission. And then they would end up being very, very expensive. Let's see. And I do have a little information for you guys in regards to Shawanda, um, the button company. And it's actually B. Shawanda and Sun Ocean Pearl Button Factory. I guess that's the name of the company. Um, apparently, they make more bohemian type of um, designs for their buttons, which you can kind of see. A bit of that bohemian design in this button because of like the little swirlies around the edges and also simply using pearl that's very boho if nothing else is and let's see they use conch shell to create buttons many times obviously they do now and I guess eventually used other um, other types of materials to make the buttons as well. And what else did it say? I guess they also imported buttons from Czechoslovakia. And they owned a button factory on Long Island, New York. So a little bit of Shawanda or, and am I, yeah, it says Shawanda. Shawanda history there for you. So when you find Shawanda buttons, you're also finding a piece of history. Now, another button that I want to show you guys that I think is incredibly fun is this button that had, and I have not only the ones you see here, I have more of these. I have some that are a little bigger and I have some that actually are also a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can tighten up this shot for you. With all of these little carved squares in it, and not only are they carved in, they're indented. So that is a really different and very complex design. And of course, you know, putting the holes in the button, not as much of a big deal, obviously, if they have the machinery to do so. But the fact that these um, squares almost have like that 3D effect. I think that is very cool, very futuristic for the time when these were made. And you can see the back. So I picked out a few more buttons to discuss. This is another beauty and it is a button that was dyed and look at that gorgeous turquoise blue and just look at the intricacy of the carving you can see a star shape in that and it also has this fancy brass finding that comes up the center and that also helps to attach the shank on the back so you can see that shank right there and absolutely a stunning, like I said, there are buttons that are just, I mean, they're pieces of jewelry. And let's, you know, not play or shoot around the bush when it comes to that. They are definitely pieces of jewelry. They're, um, you know, not necessarily appreciated the way they should be because, you know, people just don't know enough about them. So my hope is with doing these videos that, you know, I can share that knowledge and also get people interested in collecting. Just collect with care, as I always warn you guys. So look at this one, absolutely stunning. And this, you guys, is a Czechoslovakian button. How do I know? 
because it used to be on a card and it said that it was made in Czechoslovakia. But the card was so old that it actually fell apart and I just have a little tiny corner of it left so I could put store it with the actual button. But you could see that gorgeous mustard colored enamel work. And then even around the edges, it has six sides of it. Around those sides, one, two, three, four. Oh, it has eight sides. Apologies, I can't count. Um, eight sides to it, but around that frame, if you will, you could see just the littlest like detail, that delicate detail that they added. And of course, large in charge, you could see that definite pearl um, shell that's in the center. And then I'll flip it over so you can see what the shank looks like. And I have maybe four of these I think left. I think there were like eight of them on the card initially. Another button that is absolutely a stunner and this one applies a few methods. Um, this is also a very old button. This one um, which has not only the pearl which everything sits on top of it also has this metal work, which is applied with a flower um, motif to the top. And then it has a little bit of highlighting in this little sort of pinkish, purplish sort of color, which is really pretty. Of course, very indicative of an earlier era when everyone was into their like pastels and everything being sunshiny and gay and you know, we're going to run through the flower fields. This is a two hole button, which you can barely see on that side, but you can clearly see the two holes on this side. And this one I'm showing you because luster counts. <laughs> um, I have many buttons that are like this with this high shine luster and you see a rainbow of colors throughout the button and all of that is nature made. So man did not do that. That's nature made. However, to get this shine, the button has to be polished. So there are machines, especially they can use now, obviously compared to back then when everything, you know, was they would polish, but it was a much harder job to do. Um, you could get this really high fancy gloss, which what it does is it sort of adds value to the button. And also this would be on something that was a more expensive piece of clothing. And here you have this perfectly rectangular shank and this is a um, self shank. So, so, you know, they had to use machinery to actually remove bits of button to get this shape in the center. And then of course the hole is drilled in there as usual. So absolutely stunning, amazing button itself. And this would be a button that would be relatively hard to make. One of the reasons why is because of the shank. So they had easier ways to make it, but if someone was willing to, you know, pay more for a better garment and the edges of this are like as smooth as a baby's bottom, just super smooth. This button is another button that is by Shawanda and how do I know because I have others and they were also on cards. Um, this one as you can see once again lots and lots of detail. I'm going to see if I can make it even larger. This one is smaller than an American dime or 10 cent piece. Not a lot smaller but a bit smaller. And what you could see in this one, of course, is all of that intricate design, um, the sort of floral pattern on a vine in the center. And then around the edge, you could see where they did that feathering effect to this button. Four holes, as you can see, of course. And this is what the back looks like. If I don't drop it. There you go. So mother of pearl forever. 
And as you guys know, I have a lot more buttons we could go through and we would be here forever. So if there are more buttons that you would like to see, please let me know. And I will be glad to share them with you. Um, if you have any questions, of course, please leave them down in the comments. Anything to add, any other knowledge, I always love to learn. Please share. And also remember that um, I need you to please do me a favor, thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Also remember that your health is your wealth. And without your health, you have absolutely nothing. So please, please, please remember to take care of yourselves and be very, very well.